This time, we are going to speak about a Latin word in camera. Well, this is a phrase derived from Latin, literally meaning in a chamber. This term usually applies to court cases or portions of cases which are conducted in private. This can take uh, place either in a judge's private chambers or office or in a courtroom from which the public and the media have been excluded. Certain cases may be ordered to be held in camera where highly sensitive matters are conduct, uh, concerned, for instance, where children are victims of sexual crimes. Similarly, certain portions of trials may be held in camera if there are highly confidential facts, for instance, trade secrets or even top secret national security matters which a party does not want uh, revealed to the general public. A trial camera is the opposite of a trial in open court. Not just courts, but boards of directors or of companies and other organizations sometimes hold their meetings in camera when they deal with confidential matters like advice that is subject to the attorney-client privilege. Also, local government councils and committees hold in-camera meetings sometimes when dealing with personal matters about identifiable individuals or town employees or even during labor negotiations. We hear the phrase in camera in context like the following. The proceedings were held in camera to protect the young victim and witnesses from public exposure. We also talk about conducting hearing in camera or that the court sometimes conducts in camera review of documents. Thank you. Did. Did is a commonly confused term. It can mean a couple of different things for lawyers. One, it can simply be an act, i.e., a deed done, but it can also be a document, and it can be as simple as a written instrument by which a land is conveyed or transferred, or a written document which is required by law to be executed in a particular way or in a particular order to be enforceable. Traditionally, this meant signed, sealed, and delivered. Today, it often requires no more than the simple signature of one person. Documents that are required to be executed as deeds may include certain agreements, such as a transfer to real property, or where there is a lack of consideration, and by consideration we mean in the contractual sense, the common law contractual sense, which is the thing uh, that's done or given or the promise to do so by one party to a contract in exchange for the act or promise of the other party to the contract. So in those situations, like when you have the confirmation or creation of a right or an interest, like the power in a power of attorney or the confirmation or creation of a binding obligation such as a guarantee, you can have a deed in lieu of consideration. So if the formal requirements for execution are met, the deed is enforceable regardless of the lack of consideration which would otherwise be required in normal contract. Ex post facto. This is the Latin phrase which literally means after the fact. This phrase, ex post facto, is usually used to refer to retroactive laws, that is, laws which change the legal consequences of acts which were committed before the law was made. Now, in many countries, ex post facto criminal laws are prohibited. They are seen as a violation of the rule of law as it applies in a free and democratic society. This is because there is a theory that it's unfair to punish a person for an act 
which was legal at the time that it was committed. And the United States Constitution, among other countries' laws, provides that no state shall pass any ex post facto law. They believe that the people must be able to know the law. If ex post facto legislation were permitted, there would be no way of knowing whether one, one's action are legal or illegal. However, in a non-criminal context, ex post facto laws are sometimes permitted if they benefit the citizens vis-à-vis -vis the state. This phrase is usually used as an adjective, as in the sentence, the plaintiff challenges this amendment on ex post facto grounds. We also see it in the phrase ex post facto clause, the clause that I quoted to you before from the U.S. Constitution is known as the ex post facto clause, and we also talk about ex post facto provisions in laws. This phrase is not only used when we are talking about laws, but we can also talk about, for instance, an ex post facto ratification of a contract, or we can also talk about the fact that the president's advisers made an ex post facto reconstruction of the crisis. And finally, we can use this phrase as an adverb, as in the sentence, the town limits have been expanded ex post facto. Thank you.